A lot of you have been asking me about my skincare routine. So I decided to put together a video about how I protect my face and the rest of my head. Here's my review of the HEC R5 11 Pro Venom. Hong Jin Crown. That's the full form of HJC. If you haven't heard that before, don't swear it. I heard it for the first time in a Fortnite video too. And then I went onto the website to confirm whether that information was right or not. Now, if you're not interested in purchasing this HJC helmet, maybe some of the points which I'll be talking about during the course of this review will help you look out for these kind of features on a helmet which you are looking to buy. Starting off with a bit of history, this Venom graphic was part of a limited edition Marvel range that HJC launched a few years ago. The range also included Iron Man, Spider-Man and a few other superheroes too. Over the last year, I've seen a lot of people make their own version of the Venom graphic on locally made helmets. Now, some of them did a really good job. Some websites also were selling stickers that you could stick onto your helmet and make it look similar to the Venom graphic. While some people did a good job, others, well, I'll let you decide. Now, before I get into the features and the review of this helmet, let's firstly answer the two most commonly asked questions on my channel. How much did I buy it from? And where did I get it from? It was bought from a store called Hodaka Motor World Singapore when I was in Singapore on vacation. They had an offer running where you could exchange any old helmet, and I mean any old helmet, for a flat 5,000 rupee approximate discount on a new AJC helmet. Now I had an old Icon airframe helmet which was approximately four and a half years old so it served its purpose and I exchanged that for the discount on the new R5 11. At the time, the cost of that helmet in Singapore was approximately Rs 40,000. The lesson you should take away from this is that a good helmet will not just save your head, it might just save your wallet too. Now let's get straight into it. The helmet comes with an ECE R2205 safety rating, which is pretty much the same rating that the ISI helmet safety standard is based off here in India. Surprisingly though, they try to ban the sale of these helmets in India. Go figure. There's a very interesting article by Tushar Berman in the description of this video which will give you more insight into all of that. You should definitely check that out afterwards. In terms of weight, this is the lightest helmet I've owned so far. I've had an Icon airframe helmet, well two Icon airframe helmets and currently own a AGV K1 winter test helmet too. And I can feel the difference in weight between those helmets and this one whenever I swap between them. The outer shell is made using advanced PIM Plus, which is premium integrated matrix plus fiberglass, which uses six different layers of material to make the helmet lighter and stronger. The helmet weighs just 1265 grams. That's lighter than a 1 kg bag of detergent powder, which offers 500 grams free. I should have come up with a better example for that. While we're on the topic of the outer shell, what AGC did is they curved the sides of this helmet ever so slightly and that's to reduce the possibility of your collarbone being broken by your helmet in the event of a crash that makes your head move around very quickly. Now a lot of other manufacturers have also started to look at this as something to integrate into their helmets and my AGV K1 helmet back there also has a similar design. I'm now waiting for Indian helmet manufacturers to come up with similar designs on their helmets and claim that they've discovered them first just like how they discovered Vents a few years ago. You know who you are. Now, apart from the safety that this helmet offers, one of my main reasons for picking the R5 11 was because of the amount of air that it flows through. You see, Mumbai's weather is very similar to my RC390, hot most of the time. So I needed a helmet that could flow a lot of air in and also let that hot air out. The R5 11 has six intake vents and four exhaust vents that have been developed based off wind tunnel testing, which make it a great helmet for our weather. It also worked very well during my ride to Nagpur last year, where the temperatures crossed 44 degrees. While we're on the topic of airflow, let's also take a moment to understand the purpose of that spoiler at the back of the helmet. It not only helps to stabilize the helmet and avoid drag in a tuck at high speeds, but also increases the helmet's ability to let warm air out of the four vents at the back. Think of the spoiler as a laxative after a spicy meal. You know there's gonna be hot stuff coming out of the back, this just helps increase the flow. Now, considering I spend all of my time on a motorcycle in a helmet, I wanted to make sure that the helmet was comfortable too. The liners are made of fabric that's antibacterial, moisture wicking and dry quickly. Along with the chin curtain, they're fully removable and washable. 
I bought an extra pair of cheek pads that I use with this helmet which are smaller in size that I use only on the race track to give me that snug fit. If that last statement confused you, understand that when it comes to cheek pads, smaller means thicker. In addition to being comfortable, the cheek pads also come with reflective panels at the back of the helmet to make you more visible at night. The cheek pads also come with an emergency release system which makes it easier for a first responder to safely remove your helmet in the event of a crash. Pulling on these emergency tabs allows the cheek pads to slide out of their mounting points on the inside of the helmet without having to use much force. One of the downsides of this feature though is that if you've got a really snug fitting helmet, every now and then when you're taking off your helmet, the cheek pads do tend to come loose. And as an added bonus, if you're having a really bad day, you could also lose one of the push buttons that secure it into place. Now I know what you're thinking, and yes, the helmet does come with spare buttons, just in case. They've also included removable ear pads that hide a cavity that could accommodate speakers for your Bluetooth helmet intercom system. Now with six intake and four exhaust vents, there's a lot of air flowing through the helmet, so you can't realistically expect it to be very silent inside. But I should mention that if you use the chin curtain and shut down all of the vents along with locking the visor down, the helmet does seem relatively quiet. Now when it comes to visibility, the helmet comes with a clear and a dark smoke visor that provide 95% UV protection. The box also includes a pinlock anti-fog insert. Both visors can accommodate a pinlock insert on the inside of the visor and visor tear-offs in case you need that on the outside of the helmet visor. The pinlock insert worked really well during my monsoon and winter rides and swapping the visor over on the helmet is easy thanks to the Rapid Fire 2 shield replacement system. Considering how large the eye port on this helmet is, it provides you with a great field of view whether you're tucked in on the racetrack or upright on an ADV off-roading. I will add though that the peripheral vision available on this helmet is less when you compare it to the Icon airframes that I had and the AGV K1 that I currently own. Still not a deal breaker. The visor locking mechanism is placed right in the center so you can operate it with either hand. This helps in preventing the helmet's visor from opening up at higher speeds or when doing head checks. While we're on the topic of locking, the helmet comes with the double D ring closure system which is more widely accepted in motorsports over the quick release micro ratchet system. Now if you're interested in picking up the AJC R511 Pro helmet, I've left a link in the description which should help you out. Also I'll be doing a lot of giveaways in the month of July along with custom elements. Now if you're not familiar with their work, they are official distributors for AGV, AJC, Alpine Stars, Dainese and a whole lot of other brands also. I've left a link to their website and this is their Instagram page. If you want to get ahead of the competition for these giveaways, go ahead and start following them and check out their website while you're at it. I hope I was able to answer most of your questions around the AJC R511 helmet. If there's any other questions or if you have comments or feedback or even if you want me to review other gear which you've seen me use on my channel, go ahead and mention that in the comment section. I respond to all sensible comments. Sensible. Also, I'm more active on Instagram than I am here on YouTube. So if you aren't already following me, here's my Instagram handle. Go ahead and check it out. As always guys, at least wear your helmets while riding your motorcycles and stay safe. It's a freaking jungle out there. Goodbye.